It was the friendly face who worked at the floral department at the Sedona Safeway until she vanished without a trace. Three weeks after Yolan went missing, it was as if she just disappeared. Julia Burnett is a community advocate who felt Yolan Miller's case deserved more attention, hoping to help law enforcement with leads. Burnett says while Yolan has autism, she is high functioning and able to live a normal life. The circumstances around her disappearance are strange. According to the police report, on June 19, 2022, Yolan told her roommate she was going to Jerome for a meeting and left the house in a rush. The roommate told police she left in a nice outfit including white pearls and believed she was meeting someone for a date. Later telling police, Yolan was visiting romantic chat rooms despite having a boyfriend. She wasn't dressed to go hiking. She also didn't take her dog because she took, takes her dog everywhere with her. That becomes important because after the 19th, family, friends, and her boyfriend didn't hear from her again. And when she didn't show up for work on June 22nd, her boss reported her missing. Then a major clue. On June 24th, Yolan's Ford Escape was found abandoned on a Forest Service road near the Hononki Heritage Site, 12 miles northwest of Sedona. It's very rural. You need a high clearance vehicle. You just don't happen upon this, this road. Inside the car, investigators found Yolan's purse with her license, social security card, credit card, and keys. And the police report says Yolan's bank told investigators the last activity on her account was a withdrawal on the 19th, the last day anyone saw her. I feel like somebody lured her out there and maybe she got in the car with somebody. The area where her car was found was searched extensively, but nothing else showed any signs of Yolan's whereabouts, leaving a major mystery in the hearts of those who live in Sedona who were used to seeing her friendly face at the grocery store. I called Sedona police this morning to try to talk to the sergeant in charge of the investigation, but did not hear back from him. However, I was told on the phone there were no new leads. At this point, those who are fighting for advocacy for this case just hope someone saw her in a teal shirt, gray shorts, and white pearl necklace that day somewhere between Sedona and Jerome and may come forward or have more information. So the question is, do, has anybody said what her mental state, what her emotional state, what was going on in her life? Yeah, so in the police report it says she was dealing with kind of this uh, you know, reflection on a year ago, her brother had died. And so people thought maybe she was going out to reflect on that situation. Right. However, there are multiple people in the report that told investigators she was not suicidal. She was upset. She was dealing with it, mm -hmm. but she was not suicidal. And you would think, too, if that was the case, she would have been found in that area. They did extensive searching, helicopters, canines, yeah. foot search. You would have found her because it was a rural area. She wasn't mm -hmm. dressed for that. So a lot of questions there, but people did not believe that she went out there to take her life. Hopefully the renewed focus on this case will help bring it to a conclusion. Brianna Whitney, yeah. thanks for that. Yeah.